On this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at a super lightweight 160 millimeter rotor that doesn't cost very much. So this rotor I purchased off of Amazon. It's by a brand like Kaitzer or something like that. I was actually looking for some Ashima rotors as I've used those in the past. Ashima makes super lightweight rotors that are reasonably durable. But I came across this rotor on Amazon where they'll ship a pair for right about $15. Uh, and, well, I gotta have to try them if they're that cheap. So this set of rotors, uh, this is basically a knockoff of the Ashima rotor. Uh, for all I know, it's probably made in the same place, but it's got a very lightweight style design. Uh, it is a six bolt version like you would expect. Now, one thing you'll notice is the holes on the rotor, there are quite a few of them, so there's actually not that much material. And you gotta remember that for a rotor to be lighter, it's a, it's a piece of steel, so the only way that they can really lighten the rotor is either to make some hybrid form of material, kind of like how Shimano uses aluminum and then plates it with steel. But in this case, this is just a standard steel rotor which means the rotor is gonna have to just lose surface area. Now, before you go thinking that that means you're gonna lose brake power, you're not. And that's because when you have the hydraulic caliper going onto here, if you lose surface area, what actually happens is you don't lose friction, you increase the amount of friction on the surface area that's there. And what that means is that you accelerate the wear of the rotor, of the brake pads, everything wears quicker. So when you use a rotor like this, it's expected that the rotor is not gonna last anywhere near as long as a traditional rotor. You're also expecting that you're gonna have quite a bit higher heat. So, you know, you wouldn't spec a rotor like this, say on, you know, a downhill bike or something like that. And I would never put these on a road bike where you're gonna have sustained braking forces that are going to create a ton of heat. What this is going to do is this is going to jump onto my lightweight full suspension. And in that scenario, uh, around where I ride, I'm never doing sustained uh, braking on that bike. So I'm not worried about durability. Well, now that we've talked a lot about this kind of rotor, let's go ahead and place it onto our scale. So the rotor itself, holy crap, is light. I mean, that's 76 grams. If we go back to other 160 millimeter rotors that I've tried, like the RT900 rotor, that was 119 grams. So that's a Durace level rotor from Shimano. And then if you go to an Avid centerline rotor, also in a 160 and a very high quality rotor, you're down to 110 grams. So this is absolutely insane at 76 grams. Next up, I'll mount this up onto my bike. I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll basically let you know what I think of the rotor and whether or not I trust it. I failed to do the follow-up video that I had planned on while I still had these mounted up on my bike. They went on to my Santa Cruz Blur, and for a while, they did work okay. I mean, the thing is with a rotor like this, the issue comes in when you're thinking about how the rotor's working. So with a rotor like this, I didn't have the full confidence that I really wanted. And that's really a challenge when you're out on the trail. You don't wanna be thinking about whether or not your brakes are gonna work the way they want to. When the rotor was new, I definitely felt like it was fine, but I feel like as they started to get used and as the rotor started to get discolored, I could really tell that the braking wasn't there. You can tell that it overheated several times because the material started to turn blue. And when that happens, you get glazing and the friction coefficient goes way down. So would I use these rotors again? Well, no. I mean, in my opinion, just buy the right rotors, run a set of SRAM centerline rotors, and you'll be more than happy and plenty lightweight. Save the weight on something that isn't safety. Well, thanks for watching this video on this insanely light, incredibly cheap Amazon rotor. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video.